Today, we're building a jig to safely cut thin strips of wood like this on a table saw using scraps you probably already have in your shop. So, thin pieces of wood so, thin pieces of wood like this are useful in woodworking for things like bent lamination, plywood edging, and my personal favorite, miter splines. You might say, okay, cool, I'm gonna go ahead and just make the cut on a table saw, right? I mean, after all, the purpose of a table saw is to cut white stuff into narrower stuff. But if you need to rip anything thinner than a quarter of an inch, things start to get a little dicey. And this is because there isn't enough support on the bed of the table saw between the fence and the blade. It makes it much harder to push the material towards the fence and forward, which is the recommended and safe way to rip on a table saw. It is much better to make these cuts on the left side of the blade. Cutting one strip, pretty easy, but making a second one or your 50th piece the exact same thickness as the first one, not so much. And that is where this jig comes in. For this jig, you will need a seven by 14 inch, half inch plywood, some three quarter inch screws, a miter locking bar, and a ball bearing. You can repurpose a ball bearing from a crappy router bit or borrow one from your rabbiting bit. A bearing isn't really necessary for this jig, but it does help the wood glide much more smoothly. For the miter locking bar, I suggest you steal one from a featherboard because when was the last time you actually used your featherboard? You can also make a DIY miter locking bar out of some wood and hardware, but honestly, don't. My miter locking bar doesn't have any holes on each end, so I'm going to drill them because it'll be helpful in securing the bar to the rest of the jig. For the plywood, you're going to want to make cuts like this to create four pieces, A, B, B, and C, and the rest are going to be waste. The two B pieces are going to get a 45 degree bevel on one edge, and the C piece is going to get 45 degree bevel on both edges. Next, I'm going to drill and countersink some pilot holes on both B pieces. And if you don't feel like using screws in this jig, feel free to use glue instead. The next part is probably gonna be the more tricky part of the build. Uh, so I need to create a slot that runs the center length of part C. There are many ways to do this. You can drill a bunch of holes in a drill press and then use a chisel to clean it up. You can also do this on a router table, which I don't really feel comfortable with. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and use a router with an edge guide instead and take shallow passes. Once the slot is cut, I like to make the tip pointy for styling points and because it gives a better clearance for the stock to feed through once the jig is complete. We can then scoot up the ball bearing such that it makes it right past the edge of the wood ever so slightly and then drill a pilot hole and screw it down by hand. Next, we're going to take part A, which is our base, and assemble two Bs on each end and snug up C in the middle. And then drive all the screws down. At this point, the centerpiece might feel a little tight, in which case, feel free to sand it by hand and then add some paste wax to remove the friction. Then, we're going to place it on a table saw to get a feel for the travel of the centerpiece. We're gonna get it past the saw blade and then mark a spot to drill a hole through for the locking bolt piece. Feed the bolt through, square up the miter bar, and screw that down to the base. And for some test cuts, I'm going to leave an eighth of an inch space between the jig and the saw blade and take my first pass. To make additional pieces, I will scoot both the fence and the wood over until the wood touches the bearing, lock the fence, and rip once more. Measuring the cuts, we have an absolute bang on eighth of an inch across all of the pieces we just made, and that's exactly the point of this jig. You don't need this jig all that often, I'll be honest, but when you do, it is absolutely invaluable. It's cheap to make, so go make one, and I will see you on the next one.